All right, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, before I begin, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rachak Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And as always, peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David that are scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I'm kind of late uh, addressing this uh, topic where uh, you have the Genesis Israelites. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're basically um, making a dispute about how we interpret who the Prince of Tyrus is in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. And I um, mean, this is the thing with, you know, men such as uh, those two men at the Genesis Israelites, right? When you get in that whole debate spirit, um, you know, you get to reading all these um, extra biblical texts. You read all these Bible commentaries from these different uh, theological scholars. You start to get in that mindset of thinking that the more you, you know, delve into the scriptures with that state of mind, the more you're going to uh, think that you're actually right in your own eyes, you know, which the scriptures tell you that um, he that is uh, wise in his own conceit, woe unto him. All right. Um, a lot of guys will start to get uh, over technical with these scriptures instead of seeing the spiritual aspect of the scriptures and you you'll fail to compare spiritual things with spiritual you know um a lot of people that can't get or grasp the concept of reincarnation all right they they would uh think that it's uh butchering the scriptures it's uh you know you're uh, manipulating the scriptures or you're speculating or whatever the case may be if you try to draw the comparison of certain spiritual things right that people that are, that don't have the spirit would consider foolish these guys teach that uh king david was moses or king david was, is, is peter well these guys teach that uh the lord <laughs> Jesus Christ, which his name is uh, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, they teach that he's uh, Solomon, King Solomon. And um, when you, you know, read the scriptures from this theological scholastic standpoint, you know, you'll, you'll disagree too because you don't have the spirit. There's certain things that are of the spirit that is uh, too hard to understand with people that are uh, natural, people that are uh, sensual, all right, lacking the spirit. So you got Genesis Israelites, and you can tell that these dudes, they're, the way they're moving and what they're trying to teach, these guys don't have the spirit. They have knowledge, but they just don't have the spirit. So they're having a hard time with certain things that we actually teach and i guess this is the latest topic all right dealing with the prince of tyrus okay now for the record a lot of scriptures that we do use in certain applications we always make sure to to uh qualify you know what the, the original context of the scripture is talking about we always do that like for example they uh say that we break down Amos 9 wrong. You know, when it says, uh, the eye of the Lord is upon a sinful kingdom and I will destroy it off the face of the earth. We know that that's originally talking about the Lord's own people, the children of Israel. And that's why it goes the further on to say that he's going to sift uh, the house of Israel among nations like corn is sifted in the sieve. But the sinners of his people is who he's going to destroy. So we know that that sinful kingdom is talking about Israel. But we take the application of it and apply it towards America because America is a sinful nation. It's a sinful kingdom. 
All right. And um, but a, a bulk of our people are actually in Babylon. All right. Committing all type of iniquity, worshiping all kind of idols, you know, doing the things that are uh, valuable to the society as far as its culture is concerned, American Western culture. So we qualify that before we make that application. So it's no different than the king, uh, the prince of Tyrus, how we use the application of it towards the, 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 the modern day rulers of, of, of this society, the so-called white men. You know, we know that uh, the Prince of Tyrus, you know, he he had uh, wisdom and uh, trafficking. All right. That's what made him wealthy. He, he, he was big in commerce. And he let that wisdom get to his head and he became proud and he developed a God complex. Who does that sound like today? So we draw the parallels and we bring it out because like the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes, there is no new thing under the sun. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let's get uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 and I'm going to read it in the NLT. And it says, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. And like all the things that Esau does now, it's not original. <laughs> you know, a lot of uh, his cultural practices and idols that he worshipped, he took that from the ancient world. The Greeks and the Romans, they took a lot of their uh, pagan practices and, and, and cultural norms. They took that from the ancient Egyptians the ancient Babylonians. So there's nothing really new. All right. So. <clears throat> I'm going to just play a little bit of the clip. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you already saw this already. I'm, I'm late addressing it, but. You know, I'm going to just play the, the video because you can see that these guys, they try to be super technical, you know, by their, you know, readings and studies that they you know put in and um they've been lacking underst understanding through the spiritual aspect it's like they pretty much they're they're not understanding through the inspiration of the almighty but from the wisdom of this world all right and that's where you start to uh Lose the, the 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 gems, if you will. All right, the the, the mysteries, the the similitudes. You have to have the under the, the the Holy Spirit to discern and understand the mysteries. So let's uh get into it. These dudes are starting to become like vocab in this aspect. So let's uh listen real quick. Context. Remember that people were saying that's the white man. Yeah. So in Ezekiel 28 and 3, people will go to this. There's one particular camp that I'm thinking of that goes here often. And it says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from you. Now, chat, don't feel embarrassed if you get it wrong. Uh, but what do y'all believe that this means in Ezekiel 28 and 3? When it says, Behold, you're wiser than Daniel. There's nothing they can hide from you. When it says that you are wiser than Daniel, who's who's this person or thing that's wiser than Daniel? Shalom to my SOT brothers in the in the building. SOT in the SOT. So when it says in Ezekiel 28 and 3, you're wiser than Daniel, who's that talking about? Who knows? We don't got no answer in the chat. Okay, well, I know when I first came into the truth that I constantly heard this scripture being referenced about Europeans. You know, look, look at their technology, man, and this, they got that, and they got these things. They're wiser than Daniel. 
Uh, that is a complete butchering of what is going on here in Ezekiel 28. So if you just read literally two verses earlier, literally one verse earlier, actually. Yeah, literally one verse earlier, Ezekiel 28 and two. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus says the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, and in the midst of the seas. And who else in scripture has that been said about? Because notice this is describing the the, the character and the, the, the complex of this particular individual. Right? That he's on he's such on a level that he believes that he's a God on earth. All right, his 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 intelligence. His, his, his wisdom and his wealth that got into his, his his brain that he's he believes that he's on the level of, of a higher power who else uh and reference does this uh describe this is how you know you can make that application when you go to isaiah, isaiah the 14th chapter which is talking about the king of babylon definitely not the king of uh tyrus but it he describes it in the same fashion. I will I will ascend above uh, the clouds. I will sit on 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 the. Uh, let, let me go to it. Showing you that there's no new thing under the sun. Let's go to Isaiah 14, and I was at 12. It is Isaiah 14 and 13. And it says, um, For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. So this is the same uh, uh, proud, lofty, you know, uh, arrogant state of this particular king. Just like the king of Tyrus, right? Who 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 sets his heart as the heart of the Most High, all right? Who sit who who sits in that seat? Let's go to Ezekiel twenty-eight. Ezekiel uh, twenty-eight and two. It says, "Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up." And thou hast said, I am a God, and I sit in a seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not the most high God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of the most high God. So here it is. You got in Isaiah 14 describing the king of Babylon. All right. That in his mind, he's going to ascend to the heavens and set his throne above the stars of the most high. Right. Now he's going to elevate himself and sit himself. With the gods as if he's a god himself. All right. And try to be like the Most High. So that means that he's going to set his mind as the mind of the Most High as well. So why can't we make this correlation? The Lord maketh things uh, uh, new. He, he can make things both old and new. Like, for example, Jeremiah. Uh, takes from uh, prophet Isaiah when he prophesies the downfall of Babylon. But these are two different Babylons. And how do we know that? When Isaiah was on the scene during the uh, uh, the, the Assyrian uh, Empire, um, Babylon was yet to, to, to uh, be a, a superpower. I mean, it was just coming up. But it was prophesying that both Persia, you know, Elam, as well as uh, the Medes was going to bring the downfall of Babylon. And which that did ended up happening. Babylon got took down by, uh, was it Darius? You had Cyrus the Great and then you had uh, Darius. When Jeremiah prophesied the downfall of, of Babylon, we know that this was right before Babylon came to uh, take down Jerusalem 
and, and besiege it and, 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 you know, ransack the temple. But what Babylon was he prophesying of? Because the Babylon he prophesied about was going to be completely destroyed and uninhabitable. When merely the, the Neo-Babylonian Empire, it was just a transfer of uh, rulership. It wasn't destroyed completely. It was just a transfer of rulership to the medial Persian Empire. But Jeremiah talks about Babylon falling. And we know that Isaiah said the same thing. So going to show you that uh, there is no new thing under the sun. So that's how we apply the king of Tyrus to Esau. There's no new thing under the sun. He has the same God complex as the prince of Tyrus did. He thinks that he's on a level of, of, of the most high. Because of what? The wealth, his flowing wealth, he put his trust in his riches and also his his wisdom, which when you go to Isaiah 40, let me go to Isaiah um, 47, dealing with the daughter of Babylon, which we know this is talking about America. Let's go to Isaiah 47. And uh, I'm going to read uh, verse 10. And it says, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. And uh, just this last part of the verse indicates that the daughter of Babylon would also, the rulers of this particular kingdom, would have that same God complex. Because the only the most I can say he is. But he told, uh, he had the angel tell Moses in that burning bush, I am that I am. So them letting this left hand wisdom that they have get to their head, they have that guy complex. So just as the prince of Tyrus, as well as the king of Babylon, this is the persona of the, these risen up enemies of the Most High, who actually have a prominent role on the on the Most High's world stage, that these men they they really think that they're the directors of this movie, that they control it all. No, you you don't control it all. The Most High uh, raised you up, like he told uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and I believe he also told uh, his son. Uh, 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 Belshazzar, the same thing. I rule in the kingdom of men and set up over it whom I will. All right. So that's pretty much our stance. And that's why we, we go to that verse. And guess what? Paul even describes the same thing when going into the man of sin, the son of perdition. Who's the, who's the son of perdition? Who's the, the man of sin right now? Who is that referring to? It's 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahushai Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Yahushai is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, right? A, a rebellion against the Most High. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And who is this talking about? Who is this devil, this, this, this man of, of, of lawlessness that's going to be exposed before the world? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High? What are they doing with this World Economic Forum? What are some of the the the, the, the great swelling words and blasphemies that they've been speaking out against the Heavenly Father about what they're going to do with the world and what they're going to do with the future? You know all these uh, 
uh, uh, agendas and, and, and objectives as if they could have this foresight, like they can call the end, you know, the future from the beginning, like they're the most high. Who's doing that? Who's building an image right now and, and, and life is being given to it where you got literally we, we're living in a, the era of iRobot now, which they did the predictive programming of it through the film. And now we're seeing all the technology is being announced. Come on, man. It says so that he as the most high set up in the temple of the most high showed himself that he is the most high. So <clears throat> he's going to come in, in the same fashion. All right. Proud, puffed up. All right. He set his uh, mind as uh, as this, as if he's the most high himself. You know, he has uh, wealth and he also has that left hand power. He could do miraculous things through his uh, artificial intelligence. He has his uh, scientists and it tells you in Psalms, the 64th chapter that they do a diligent search. They search out iniquities and they accomplish a diligent search. So that's the reason why you, there's no secret hidden from them. So you can apply the, 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 the qualities of the Prince of Tyrus to E because Esau, he's, they was in Ezekiel's time with the knowledge and wisdom on the left-hand side that Esau have, they would have the same conclusion about him in this, in this, this new age uh, beast system, you, 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 he's wiser than Daniel. They got, you know, chat G, GPT and, you know, all these different uh, AI uh, applications that do all the work. That gives you all this uh, information that we wasn't privy to uh, uh, decades ago. And making his own predictions. Like, come on, man. So these dudes, you know, they're trying to be over technical, you know, coming from that theological uh, scholarly uh, spectrum. And they're forgetting the overall bigger picture, because really, when you get into that spirit, you're doing it because there's some type of selfish ambition behind it. These dudes are trying to make a name for themselves. That's the reason all is debating and this whole controversy between them and Captain Tazariat. Dudes is really trying to make a name for themselves. And that's the reason why you're not the, the Holy Spirit is not with these dudes. Because like it tells you in Wisdom of Solomon in the first chapter, wisdom will not enter into a malicious soul. So if your heart ain't right, the spirit is not going to trust you. Wisdom of Solomon 1. And verse 4 says. <clears throat> I'll start at 3. It says. For forward thoughts separate from the most high. And his power when it is tried. Reproved the unwise. For into a malicious soul. You know somebody that has ulterior motives. They have some type of selfish ambition. Whatever wisdom that they come in with. Is not from heaven. Is not from above. But it's sensual, it's devilish, like it tells you in the book of James. All right, it says, For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And these dudes are trying to seek a name. They're trying to seek that glory for themselves. And that's why they're eating all this honey. Which it tells you in Proverbs, you you know, you eat too much honey, you're going to vomit. So that's why all of a sudden they throwing out certain things that they learned before. You know, Ezekiel, uh, the 38th chapter, you know, Russia is going to be in power for a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> you can have sex on a Sabbath day now. Right. Um, now, whatever else they, you know. Starting to uh, switch, starting to change. Now uh, the Prince of Tyrus is not talking about the so-called white man. 
So these dudes are throwing out certain things because the spirit is no longer is, is not really working with them. You see? And uh, like it tells you in Corinthians, spiritual things are not received too well by natural people. They deem it as foolish. First Corinthians uh, 2. I'm going to start at the 13th verse. And it says, uh, I'll start at 12. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the most high, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, you know, not with these scholars and, you know, these, uh, you know, so-called Bible teachers, these uh, uh, doctors. It says, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And when you can compare and do these uh, parallels between like what I just did in this lesson with these different scriptures, you can see how you can apply the king of Tyrus, the king of Babylon, Isaiah uh, 14, which is also referred to as uh, 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 Lucifer. Right. The light bearer, which, you know, what, what does the light mean? You know? Yeah, hey, people got offended when we were teaching that Yahweh Shai is the right hand Lucifer. That we're Luciferians on the right hand side. Because we, we have the light of, of the truth. We got that day star shining in our heart. That's why we can break these scriptures down. Okay? The, these different prophecies. The similitudes, because the prophets, they were speaking similitude as well. Somebody that's technical and just reading it, you know, from from uh, a, 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 a year of a didactical standpoint, they're going to be like, um, yeah, that's not that's not what that's talking about. Yeah, the arrow is talking about an actual arrow It's not talking about. A missile because that's the only the, the only way they can really understand it they're not in the spirit to be able to analyze and, and, and do these comparisons it says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the most high for they are foolishness unto him you know they can't see John the Baptist being Elijah Oh, he, no, he, it's talking about he came in the spirit of Elijah, but not that he's actually Elijah. Well, why did the Lord tell his disciples, no, this is Elijah. If you, if you can receive it, this is Elijah. Right? He, he literally told him what it was. All right? It, it, he, wasn't a, he wasn't going around in a familiar spirit. He didn't conjure up the spirit of Elijah to where he started to, you know, wear this... Uh, 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 a garment made in a you know goat hair with, with, a, with a leather and girdle just like Elijah no he that, that was the same soul that was the same spirit the Lord sent him back and he fulfilled prophecy well you guys are teaching reincarnation that is reincarnation he said the Lord brought his spirit back in, into a, a, a body. He was back in the flesh. So if you don't have the spirit, it's going to be foolish to you. All right. It says neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. So when you go to a, let's go to first Corinthians one, because you had men back then during this time, you had the Jews. They were more so that their confirmation in the spirit was to, to see a miracle performed. They want to see miracles. They want to see signs. And then you had the uh, the Greeks. These Jakes, they were just straight up philosophers. They want to hear a new breakdown, some new mythology, some new philosophy. And if it didn't sound interesting enough, they wasn't uh, interested. They didn't believe. You know, it would just be foolish to them. All right. First Corinthians 1. In verse, um, I'm going to start at 
I'll start at 18. I'm going to read it in the NLT. And it says, The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is very is the very power of the Most High God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? The Most High has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. And these dudes, you know, they're, they're looking foolish because while they're trying to look for a technical win, you know, trying to call us out, I'm going, I'm delving, delving into the, the spiritual aspect of it. We know that the Prince of Tyrus is talking about the Prince of Tyree back at that time. He was an actual king that did live and he he he, he was wise because he, he was good with his um his commerce, his traffic. OK, and he was really thinking that, hey, I, I got it on my own. I did all this based on my own uh, wisdom. Which when you go here, let's go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28 and. Uh, Let me let me go down. Let me go to the KJV real quick. <clears throat> Here it is. Ezekiel 28 and 8. It says they show Bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the depths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And, th and you can even cross-reference this with Isaiah the 14th chapter, where it talks about how the Lord's going to stir up the dead, even the, uh, the, the, the chief ones of the nations. All right? And it talks about how thou shalt not be joined in, 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 in burial. And they're going to look down upon you and say, this is the man that... that Caused the, the the kingdoms to, to to tremble. That did shake kingdoms. Because he you're gonna be he's gonna be brought down to the ground too. He's gonna be brought down to the dust. He is gonna be like he's dead. He's no longer in power. He's not in his uh, excellency. He's not at the height of, of of heavens anymore. So this is when you read this, go to Isaiah the 14th chapter and do the parallels. Compared it to. All right, it says, <clears throat> Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God, and in the hand of him that slayeth thee. You know, and why, and why would he say that? Because he thinks that he did this on his own. You know? He really believed that his, his own wisdom, you know, granted him these riches and you know, he's on this uh, high level. You know, the most I lifted you up. Okay. So. Let me see. Uh, let me go real quick to um, Isaiah 10. Because, uh. By their logic, we can't use this either. Because this, this isn't talking about the so-called white man. But we make that application. Isaiah 10 and 5 and 6, it says, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and a staff in their hand is mine indignation. Watch them. If, if they continue with this, they're going to basically call us out again. And they're going to go into this verse and say that, yeah, GMS... They're using it wrong. This is not talking about the so-called white man. We know this is not talking about the literal, the, the so-called white man, the Edomite. But you can make the application based on understanding that that which is that which have been is that which shall be. All right, that there is no new thing under the sun. 
It says, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand is my indignation. And I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? Right? <clears throat> and then let's jump down to uh, verse 13 and 14. It says, for he said, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom. For I am prudent and I have removed the bounds of the people and I've robbed their treasures and I've put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So here, 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 here go the king of Assyria. All right. Thinking that he did everything on his own. Okay. Getting proud and getting lofty and not giving glory to the most high. Right. And my hand have found as a nest of riches of the people and as one gathered eggs that are left. Have I gathered all the earth and there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped shall the axe boast itself against him that hew, heweth therewith or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up or as if the staff should lift up itself as it as if it were no wood. So. <clears throat> Here it is, the Lord reproving the, the king of Assyria for thinking that he's on his mighty, such a mighty uh, a level as if he he got himself this uh, might, this uh, willpower to come and conquer and, 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 and take down nations. The Mosai uh, lifted him up. And we know it because it says it in the scriptures. The Lord set up down and he uh, uh, he he take up down and he set up up another. All right. So. Going back to uh, Ezekiel 28. You know, he he had the same characteristic just as the king of uh, Babylon in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. They had the same God complex. And this is what we see in Esau now. It was, which is why Paul made that comparison to uh, Pharaoh. When he said in, in the. Uh, uh, let, let me get it. So like, yeah, I meant to go to Romans 9. Yeah, this is uh, Romans 9. And 13, it says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that show of mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. All right. Because Pharaoh had the same God complex. Because he had his wise men. He had his uh, mag uh, magis. He, he was flowing the wealth because of the, the resources of Egypt. And it was made great, of course, because of uh, Joseph. So he got on a level of thinking that he was a God. And then the Mosai brought him down and humbled him. Just like he did all these other figures that we're going, we're, we're talking about. So he used a uh, uh, Pharaoh as a comparison to E, how the Lord just as how the Lord rose up Pharaoh to take him down because the Lord has uh, mercy on whom he has mercy on. And he has compassion on whom he have compassion on. He, and he also has vessels that are, uh, uh, wrath fit to destruction. They're vessels of wrath fit to destruction. Esau is that currently. All right, as as this uh, beast empire that's challenging the righteousness of the Most High by setting up his own image that goes against everything uh, the Heavenly Father represents, man. All right, so that's why Esau is uh, raised up, and he's going to be brought down. This uh, well, really in the worst way. Okay. So 
this is how we make these uh, comparisons, all right? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is why we can actually go back and even use these uh, scriptures, even though the in its original context is talking about one thing, but you can use it in a prophetic uh, aspect, okay? Just like no different than the Lord applying 70 AD to um, the abomination of desolation when it already happened with uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. All right? So anyway, going back here, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20 says, So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? The Mosai have made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since the Mosai in his wisdom saw to that, it's like it saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. And when they hear some new breakdown, some new philosophy, or some new myth or whatever, right? So when we preach that Yahweh Shai was crucified, the Jews are offended and Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by the Mosai to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Yahweh Shai is the power of the Mosai and the wisdom of the Most High. This foolish plan of the Mosai is wiser than the wisest of humans' plans, and the Mosai's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in this world's eyes of powerful or wealthy when the Mosai called you. Instead, the Mosai choose, chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those that think they are wise. Oof. And people look down on us because we're not, you know, we don't sound literate. You know, sometimes we, um, when we speak, you know, we don't sound like we're the best orators. You know, we might stumble up our words a little bit, use a, a bit of uh, word repetition you know, filler words here and there. You know, we're not the best orators, but we still demonstrate that we have the spirit because we're actually making these mysteries plain to where even, you know, people on a on with, with a lower um understanding can actually easier grasp, you know, what's being uh broken down. All right, just just basically making it plain. Okay, it says, and he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. So you know they took in the other route. They want to go to uh, your uh, area uh, didactical way instead of the inspiration way, the, the the through the Holy Spirit. All right, we're not we're not dealing with this this world's perspective okay we're only dealing with the spirit that compares spiritual things with spiritual so in the spirit hey, the prince of Tyrus the king of Babylon uh, 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 Neb uh, 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 Nineveh when we read Nahum the third chapter we know that's talking about the actual Nineveh uh, empire that, that actually ended up getting Ruin like it was prophesied to, to to take place, but we are even apply that to uh, America. You know, it talks about there is no healing of uh, of thy bruise. Jeremiah talks about Babylon how there's no uh, balm for her pain. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. And Isaiah talks about how that same Babylon is given to pleasure. Dwell, dwells careless. Well, Nineveh, the last, um, the last uh, 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 king of Assyria, Sardanapalus, he was known to be careless. He was uh, decadent. He 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 overindulged in a luxury lifestyle. He was effeminate. He cross dressed. He was always partying, and all of that led to the downfall of uh, Nineveh. You don't think that same. Uh, those same characteristics apply to this wicked kingdom. This kingdom was full of de uh, decadence. And the shame of, of, of its behavior is being seen all around the world. 
He said that he will lift up thy, thy skirts and show the, the kingdoms thy shame and, 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 and the kingdoms thy nakedness. And Isaiah, he said, you know, I will uncover the, uh, the leg, make bare the thigh, you know, and, sh and, and, sh and show, basically uh, uh, show your, your shame. So what was described concerning uh, the daughter of Babylon and how she would get exposed the same way uh, 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 Prophet Nahum it showed about how uh, Nineveh was going to be exposed and how it was going to um, collapse in the same similar fashion because there's no new thing under the sun. So I would expect you to have a... a, a uh, issue with how we uh, interpret or break these things down because you don't have the spirit. It's foolish unto you. All right. And even Jew talked about this with certain guys. This is uh, Jude 18 and uh, 19. And it says, how, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk up to their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. All right. And, and sensual meaning what? Fleshly. These dudes want to be, you know, super technical and, 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 and super duper right. Instead of actually truly understanding in the spirit of what these things mean. We use the Prince of Tyrus to convey about how uh, Esau, the so-called white man today, who's in power, he has the same exact arrogant mindset, which is going to lead to his ruin. These all apply to the so-called white man, all these different uh, chapters and verses in these uh, prophecies. If you can actually make the parallels. What happened to reading precept upon precept? Here a little and there a little. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. But if you just read the precepts and you don't have the, 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 the inspiration that give the understanding, then you're going to be just like all these other Edomite scholars out there that don't know what the hell is going on. All right? So... This is just my, you know, my take on this. All right, where you see uh, uh, Hassad and uh, Haka, you know, attempting to, you know, throw shade at us because of, you know, our application of use for Ezekiel 28 dealing with the Prince of Tyrus and how, you know, it says that he's wiser than, than Daniel. He, 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 he feels that he's wiser than Daniel now the so-called white man they're telling you that we can rewrite the Bible we can make predictions you telling me he don't feel in his mind that he's just as uh, wise as the most high so these dudes you know they, they just uh, you know trying to make a name for themselves. but it's gonna it's gonna show through all time you know because they're going to start throwing away other things as well. And, hey, you know, we, we've seen this before. But when you get in the spirit of debating all the time, that's coming in a different energy. That's a different spirit. That's not the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right? So anyway, with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this was edifying. And to the end, I say, Shalom.